During forming week, the first hectic days of your introduction to the United States Marine Corps, you receive your rifle. Three three seven zero four seven six, sir. Your rifle to guard and care for as though your life depends upon it. Your rifle. From somewhere you recall the creed of the U.S. Marine. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. My rifle is my best friend. It is my life. I will master it as I master my life. Eight weeks for your basic training. Eight weeks to fuse you and your rifle into one perfectly working unit. The M14, about 11 pounds when combat loaded, firing a 7.62 millimeter NATO cartridge, easily converted to automatic fire. But there is a far greater lesson you yet must learn. I must fire my rifle through. I must shoot straighter than my enemy who is trying to kill me. I must shoot him before he shoots me. I will. My rifle and myself know that what counts in war is not the rounds we fire, nor the noise of our burst. We know that it is hit that counts. We will hit. Prior to the midpoint of basic training, you go to the range. Your first week is spent on the school range, where, aided by your primary marksmanship instructor, you learn the principles of rifle marksmanship. The rifle is a highly engineered tool, built to fire a projectile, built, moreover, for accuracy. It's your job to provide that accuracy. There's no mystery about good shooting. Observe a set of simple rules and anyone can become a consistently good shot. Neglect just one of them and you won't for marksmanship. So simple, it doesn't come automatically. In fact, if there's one thing to emphasize, it's this. The need for concentration. Concentrate. Keep your mind always on what you're doing and you'll go a long way towards mastery of the rifle. Hurley, ever shoot a rifle? No, sir. Is there anything that concerns you about the rifle? The recall I guess, sir. That's the purpose of the slang, to aid in the reduction of the effects of the recoil as well as to help steady the rifle. Use of the slang will be taught to you later by your coach. Private, let me have a magazine. The foundation upon which marksmanship is built is the bone structure of your body. It is the main support of your rifle in a firing position. Therefore, your shooting will be at its best by ensuring you have a solid foundation there are four basic firing positions. Standing, prone, kneeling, and sitting. However, everyone's body conformation isn't the same. As you learn these positions, you may find you'll have to make some adjustments to fit your own body structure. There are some points common to all firing positions. Master them and you will master your rifle. Point one. Except for the standing position, the left hand is forward with the web of the hand against the upper sling swivel. For the standing position, the sling is placed high on the back of the arm. The hand is then moved under the sling and raised to grasp the bottom of the magazine with the base of the magazine resting across the heel of the hand. The left elbow is then allowed to rest upon the left side of the body or hip. Or you can extend your left hand forward of the magazine to a comfortable, steady distance with your wrist bent so the rifle rests across the heel of your hand. Your hand is relaxed. Or let the rifle rest in the web formed by the thumb and first finger of the hand with the wrist straight and locked. 
The weight of the rifle is supported primarily by your left arm and the sling. Note that your left elbow is under the receiver or as close as you can get it. Point two. The rifle butt is placed high in the pocket formed by your right shoulder. This keeps the rifle from slipping off your shoulder and permits an erect head position. The rifle butt will be relatively lower in your shoulder for prone, sitting, and kneeling. Point three. Grip the small of the stock firmly but not rigidly. The key is to grip it tight enough so the recoil will not cause the hand to slip. To keep the rifle butt in your shoulder, exert a firm pressure to the rear with the right hand. Your thumb extends over the small of the stock for a natural grip. Your trigger finger is on the trigger, but there is no contact. Repeat, no contact between it and the small of the stock. Point four, your right elbow is held high to allow you to control the rifle and to provide balance. Point five, spot weld. Your cheek makes contact with your thumb and the stock. Or you can use stock weld by placing your cheek directly against the stock. Whichever you use, be sure there is a solid contact. Point six, aiming and firing is precision work. Hold your breath just before you shoot to eliminate movement caused by breathing. Point seven, relax as much as possible in all firing positions. Keep muscular tension to a minimum. Okay, you're now ready to take your first step towards mastery of the rifle. Are there any questions? Soon, under the guidance of your primary marksmanship instructor, you begin to learn the various shooting positions. First, the prone position. Face the target, right hand grasping the stock at the heel, feet spread apart, weight shifted slightly to the rear. You drop to your knees. Leaning well forward, you place the butt of the rifle on the ground on the line between the target and your right knee. Pivoting on the rifle, you place your left elbow well forward and slightly to the right. With your right hand, you place the butt into your right shoulder. Grasping the small of the stock, you lower your right elbow to the ground so your shoulders are now approximately level. To obtain your natural point of aim, adjust your body until your rifle sights are in line with the target using your left elbow as your pivot point. Ensure there is no tension, right, left, up, or down. The sitting position. As you sit down, keep your feet crossed, then slide them forward. Bend at the waist and place the upper arm inside your knees. Now adjust your natural point of aim. This is the crossed ankle position. There is also the open leg sitting position and the crossed leg position. Choose one of the three sitting positions to fit your own body conformation. As your instruction progresses, you learn the kneeling position. You kneel on your right knee. Your right leg is parallel to the face of the target. Your left foot extends toward the target. Your toes pointed in the direction of the target. Your lower left leg helps control and support the rifle. It should be approximately vertical. By turning the toes inboard, you steady the left leg. Your right elbow is held approximately shoulder high. Note that the ankle is straight and the foot stretched out with the boot lace in contact with the ground. This is the medium kneeling position. There is also a high kneeling position and a low kneeling position. As in every firing position, obtain your natural point of aim. For the standing position and using the hasty sling, face the target, then execute a right face. Your feet are spread apart, your weight evenly distributed on both hips and feet. Place the sling high on the back of the arm. Now place the rifle butt against your shoulder so the sights are level with your eyes. Hold your right elbow high in order to form a pocket in your shoulder. Support most of the weight of the rifle with your right arm. Your left hand under the rifle helps mainly to steady it. Now adjust your feet to get your natural point of aim. 
If you find it impossible to get a spot weld, then use the stock weld. In sighting and aiming, your purpose is to point your rifle so the bullet will hit the target. That means the rear sight, the front sight blade, and the target must be properly related to form the sight picture. This is what you are after. The top center of the front sight blade in the exact center of your rear sight aperture with the top of the front sight blade aligned with the center of the bull's eye. Looks simple, but there are problems. If you focus your eye on an object at one range, objects at other ranges become blurred. So what do you do? Concentrate on your sight alignment or your aiming point? With a perfect sight picture, a hit. With an error in placement of aiming point, a miss. One that remains the same no matter the distance to the target. However, with an error in sight alignment, the extent of your miss will increase with the range then how do you ensure a correct sight alignment and sight picture? Focus on the front sight blade as you align your sights. As you settle into position, look across your front sight to ensure you're aiming at your target. Once this is established, return your focus to the front sight blade. This is what you should see as you fire. By means of sighting and aiming exercises, you soon master this important phase of rifle marksmanship. The important thing in trigger control is to cause your rifle to fire without disturbing your sight relationship. Let's look at the placement of the trigger finger. Depending on the size of the shooter's hand and how he grips the stock, his finger is placed on the trigger somewhere between the tip and the second joint. With a firm grip on the stock, remembering also to keep the trigger finger clear of the stock, the shooter applies a straight-to-the-rear pressure. Since this is fine, precision work, the shooter will instinctively react. He'll hold his breath at the proper time to minimize any movement of the weapon. When you have the correct sight alignment and sight picture, quickly take up the slack on the trigger. If your sight picture isn't correct, halt the pressure on the trigger. When your sight picture is again correct, you apply the small additional pressure straight to the rear that causes the hammer to fall. Remember to follow through after each round. So far, you've mastered position, sighting and aiming, and trigger control. Are you ready now for marksmanship? Not yet. Throw a ball on a straight line to a target some distance away, and it falls short. Arc the ball, and it will reach its target. This is a simple demonstration of trajectory. The same principle applies to the bullet from your rifle. The need, dependent upon the range, to adjust its trajectory. Here a strong wind is blowing directly across a baseball field. Just as the wind affects a ball hit to the outfield, it also affects the strike of your bullet. On your rifle are two knobs. One, an elevation knob to move your rear sight aperture up or down, thus affecting the vertical strike of your bullet. The other, a windage knob to move your rear sight aperture right or left, thus affecting the horizontal strike of your bullet. Turn either knob and you'll hear a click. The elevation knob can be turned from zero to approximately 72 clicks. The windage knob can be turned from zero at center index line to 16 clicks right or left. Each click will change the strike of your bullet a specific distance depending on the range to the target. Remember this rule. One click of elevation or windage will move the strike of your bullet approximately one inch for every 100 yards of range. Let's repeat it. Every click of your elevation or windage knob will move the strike of your bullet about one inch for each 100 yards of range. And so to raise or lower the strike of your bullet, you'll increase or decrease the number of clicks of elevation. To move the strike of your bullet right or left, you'll rotate the windage knob the required number of clicks. Of 
all conditions of weather, the wind presents the greatest problem. You soon learn there are different kinds of wind, each with a different effect on your shooting. See yourself in the center of a clock. You are on the firing line and 12 o'clock is your target. Winds blowing from your flank across your field of fire are full value winds. Winds coming from an oblique direction are half value winds. Winds blowing from your rear or front are no value winds. Half value winds will affect your bullet about one half as much as full value winds. As for no value winds, they have little or no effect on your bullet in basic marksmanship and so can be forgotten. How do you adjust your windage knob to compensate for full value and half value winds? First, you must determine its direction, next its velocity. Look around for a flag or any kind of cloth hanging from a pole. At the juncture of flag and pole, make a rough guess of the angle. Say it's 60 degrees. To obtain the wind velocity in miles per hour, divide this angle by four. So 15 miles per hour is the wind velocity. Remember, the angle in degrees between flag and pole divided by the constant digit four will always give you the wind velocity. Another method. Drop a piece of paper from shoulder high and point to the spot where it lands. Estimate the angle between your arm and your body and divide by the constant four to get the wind velocity in miles per hour. Now that you have determined wind direction and velocity, how many clicks of windage should you place on your rear sight to adjust your aim? For full value winds, that is winds blowing directly across your field of fire, the formula R, or range in hundreds of yards, times V, or velocity in miles per hour, divided by the constant 15 will give your answer. For half value winds, divide your answer by two, since, as you recall, they affect the strike of your bullet only half as much as full value winds. After you compute the necessary number of clicks, remembering the rule that one click will move the strike of your bullet approximately one inch for every 100 yards of range, you apply them to the windage knob. Remember, your rear sight aperture is moved into the wind. Because the trajectory of the bullet does not coincide with your line of aim, you will have to zero your rifle for each range to the target. Your true zero will be your sight settings in elevation and windage required to place a shot or the center of a shot group in the bull's eye at a given range when no wind is blowing. If your range complex is equipped with a 900 inch range, you will use this facility to obtain your initial zero for 200, 300, and 500 yards. For the 200 yard range, you set your windage at mechanical zero. You then apply 12 clicks of elevation. In the sitting position, you get off several rounds of slow fire. If a windage correction in excess of three clicks is required, qualified personnel will move the front sight to permit true zero to be as close to mechanical zero as possible. Calling each shot, you then fire several more rounds until your shots appear as you call them in the center of the target. You now have true zero for your rifle in slow fire. For your rapid fire zero, you fire three groups of three rounds each. Followed by a string of 10 rounds. Meanwhile, to bring your shot group into the center of the target, you make appropriate sight changes. To obtain your initial zero for 300 and 500 yards, you repeat the same performance. Bear this in mind, however, your elevation at 300 yards will be one to two clicks more than at 200 yards. 
and at 500 yards, approximately six clicks more than at 300 yards. And so you continue the zeroing exercise until your call and the strike of the bullet coincide. At last, you're ready for practice firing on the big range. Ready to apply all you've learned in gaining mastery of the M14 rifle. Your first job on the 200-yard range is to confirm your initial zero. Day after day, your positions and your control improve. First, at 200 yards. Then, 300 yards. And finally, 500 yards to the target. Day after day, guided by your data book, you make slight corrections in your zero. Meanwhile, you gain practice in slow fire, also in rapid fire, until at last the big day is at hand. That first relay move up to the firing line, that second relay move up to the ready line. All that has gone before this day is prologue. Today is examination day. This will be the first stage of the Marine Corps qualification course. 10 rounds standing, 200 yards, time limit 12 minutes. With one round, lock and load. Ready on the right, ready on the left. All ready on the firing line. You may commence fire when your targets appear. Now the chips are down. Now your score really counts. A score that will go into your service record book. 